G'day, I'm JT, and this is a pretty cool wrist-mounted grappling hook winch that I was able to build during my recent internship with Hacks with Industries. I had a lot of fun while I was there, and it was amazing just trying to build a real-life grappling hook winch. Unfortunately, I didn't finish it, but the progress I did make was really cool. Like, it's the coolest thing I've ever built. Just have a look at this. Wow. That's quick. That is, that is video game-like speeds. And even better, as I was leaving, the Hacksmith team graciously offered for me to take it home so I could continue developing it on my own. But, turns out, during the testing phase, we, we did damage it a little bit. The, the handles come off and we've bent this, and actually the ratchet's been quite damaged, so I think I'll have to remove that entirely. And turns out as well, I couldn't take the lithium batteries across, so I've had to get some here, and they've got different connectors, and I'm gonna have to deal with all of that. But, after I get it up and running, We'll be able to do some testing and then maybe continue developing it further. So the first thing I'm going to do is just disassemble it so that I can get to the ratchet mechanism. It's kind of gotten damaged because we were putting a bit too much pressure on it. It was a good idea. The idea was that I'd be able to ascend up and then the ratchet mechanism would sort of stop me from falling back down again if anything went wrong. But generally what happened is I just ended up hanging there like a lemon. Okay, so this is one of the issues of working with a Canadian company is half this stuff is metric and half this stuff is imperial. And you never know what you've got. Okay, so here's the problem right there. Don't know how well you can see that, but that is not meant to be bent out like that. So I think I'll remove that now and let the motor take care of braking from now on. There we go. <laughs> Look at that, that's terrible. Should I just try and straighten it? Is that a good idea? It's not a good idea. Might have to just... Ah, that worked. I feel like I'm gonna have to straighten this, I'll be back. Okay, that seemed to work, so I'm just gonna reassemble the gearbox now. Yeah, that's gonna slot right on there. All right, well that's the gearbox all back together. There's the spool. Yikes, so there's another issue I hadn't noticed. Those screws, they've completely stripped out. I guess it makes sense, there's like so much pressure of all the string bunching up against it. Oh, you can see this one's the culprit. It's got bits of bearing housing scraped all over it. Okay, so last time I did this, they all just came out. But me being very clever, I've decided that this time, if I do exactly the same thing and just tighten it a bit more, maybe they won't. It's gonna slot back into there. All right. Don't wanna lose the little key there. That's very important. Just like I bought one. Cool, I've got some welding to do now. The first thing I've got to weld is this here, it's the pulley I made. Um, the string just runs straight through that groove, but I'm gonna make something that will just surround the pulley to stop the string from unseating itself. And the second thing I'm gonna make is the actual grappling hook itself. So this here is the launcher we're gonna use. We've sort of scavenged it from a, another device. And the idea is that you'll pull this back to prime it, release, and that's what actually opens the valve with a hammer action so that the, all the air can flow out at once. But I'm just gonna have to make a hook that can fit right into that barrel there. And I've got some tubing that I'm gonna use for that job and I'm gonna have to try and scrounge up some extra steel that I can use to make the little fins. And then I think I'm gonna cover it all in foam because the last thing I want is to miss a hook and then have it fly back at me and then hit me in the head and that would be very bad. Now might be a good time to point out that welding on a wooden bench is a very bad idea. Uh, why am I doing it, you might ask? Well, it's because I haven't bothered to make a metal table yet.
there we go, grappling hook done. So I've welded the prongs on and I've welded the top closed and here's where it's a little bit different to a regular grappling hook. Well, it's also very small, but like aside from that, this channel in here has been welded on the inside so that I can double the string over and run it back along the body of the hook. And the purpose of that is when I'm putting it in the launcher, you can actually run it all the way down the barrel and the string will come out to fasten to your reel. And then when you fire it, it goes back to the correct position. I also added a little bit of foam around here. It doesn't really enhance the safety at all like I was hoping, but it does give it a better seal with the barrel. If I wanted more safety, I'd probably put some foam around here, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The other thing is when you're wearing this, this presses directly onto your arm and it's really painful actually because you're basically hanging your whole weight off of it. So one of my other things I'm gonna do is just to put a piece of foam along here just to try and make it a little softer, a little more comfortable. Even now, just from test fitting it, my arm's already getting a bit red. So the foam should help solve that problem. So here we go, progress made. I've fixed the handle now, that's back into position like it's supposed to be. And I've made this really cool upgrade here. So the pulley still spins the way it always did before, but now I've added this extra shield to it. Um, it's just sort of modified so that the string won't come out if it's passing through there. Let me make a demonstration. So the idea of it here is you've got the cord wound around the reel, and then it goes around the pulley, and then it goes through the eyelet just to keep it straight. Now previously, if you're pulling, it's all well and good, and then suddenly you get a bit of slack. This comes off the pulley, and then you're stuck. Whereas what this captive ring does is hopefully means that when you retension it, it pops straight back onto the pulley. And it seems to work perfectly. Gotta say, I'm really pleased with the design. It's super compact and elegant. All right, well, now I'm just gonna move on to the electronics. Should go well. So, here's how the circuit's supposed to go. Batteries, oh, no, oh dear. Batteries here, extension cable, which push the batteries in series, and then gives you extra length to work with, and then this plugs into ESC here. The ESC plugs into the motor, and that's everything you need. However, I made a very big mistake. See, these batteries came with XT60 connectors, which is fine, not a problem, not enough current, but just throw them away and replace them with XT90s. Not a problem. Thing is, I'm not really used to working with XT90s before. And on top of that, I did speaker cable to make the extension cord. And that wouldn't be a problem, except speaker cable doesn't have the pretty red and black colors. And what that means is when I accidentally flip the polarity, positive here goes to negative here, I didn't notice. And so I kept on soldering, doing a happy job of it. And then I plugged it in to the ESC and the thing immediately started smoking and the cables heated up really hot too. I realized, oh dear, I've made a very big mistake. What I think's happened is that on the back here, these are all the MOSFETs that control the switching frequencies that goes to the motor. And I suspect I've blown up many of them. Not all of them because actually the ESC still turns on, but many of them. And the problem is, this is a very expensive piece of circuitry. I don't want to just go and buy a new one. So I've spoken to an electronics wizard at my university, and he thinks we might actually be able to fix this just by replacing the most damaged MOSFETs. I certainly hope it works, because otherwise I'm going to have to get a whole new one.